Let's discuss some basics about EES. Uh, you can start EES by double clicking on the EES icon on desktop. Clicking EES on the start menu or going to installation folder and then double clicking the EES.exe file. After starting EES, click OK on the welcome message and you are now ready to work on EES. Most of your time on EES is going to be spent on eQuestions window. The first thing that you want to do with the EES is to configure the unit system. To do this, you can click on the SI or English level on the bottom bar of the equation window. Then you can proceed to select the appropriate unit for your problem. Now let's see how to set up a problem in EES. To make a problem setup readable, we use comments. Comments are ignored by EES interpreter, but it's useful for us when it comes to debugging and grading. There are two ways to commenting in EES, quotation marks and curly brackets. Curly brackets are especially useful because it can be used to make multi-line commit. One thing that you have to especially remember about EES is that it's not a programming language. It's an equation solver. So when you use equal sign on EES, you are telling EES that this line is an equation. However, in most of the other programming languages, this is not the case. For example, let's say that I typed A is equal to 1 plus 1. In most of the programming languages, this means A is assigned with the value of 2. However, in EES, you have an equation A is equal to 1 plus 1. When you calculate your equation, you get a is equal to 2. In this instance, it seems like that there is no difference. So let's see what happens if we type 1 plus 1 is equal to a. In most of the other programming languages, this will lead to an error. However, in EES, equation is interpreted as an equation and you get the expected answer a is equal to 2. Basic mathematical operations can be intuitively done on EES. We can do addition, multiplication, division, and exponentiation. There are two syntaxes for exponentiation, one using the hat symbol and the other using double asterisk. Both of these are equivalent. To check your work on EES, you can use check equation button. This checks whether the equation that you entered are solvable. It is not necessary to do this, but recommended. Then you can click on the solve button to solve equations. Now we is going to present you with the solutions window with all the solutions. There are some nice formatting features in EES. To make a subscript, you can use the hyphen like this. To input Roman letters, you can simply type it in English and EES will uh, show them as Roman letters in the solutions window. To get the full list of Greek symbols, you can go to f -sharp software and search for EES help. Now let's try to solve a simple problem using EES. Problem says that Mark is 158 centimeters tall with 60 kilograms of weight. Thomas is 150 centimeters with 52 kilograms. Calculate their BMIs. BMI is calculated using weight in kilograms divided by height in meters to squared. First, I'm going to check the unit system. It is SI and that's what I want. Let's input the given data into ES. Mark's height is 158 centimeters. I'm putting it in meters. Know that I can input units using square brackets. His weight is 60 kilograms. And Thomas' height is 1.5 meters. And his weight is 52 kilograms. 
Now we can do the calculation part. Max BMI is equal to his weight divided by square of his height. Also, the thermoses BMI can be written like this. Now I can check my equation and solve it. As you can see, we are getting a warning for unit inconsistencies. The reason is we didn't give the units of BMI. To fix this, we can right click on the solutions window on top of the BMI figure and then enter the appropriate units for BMI. Now let's try to solve an additional part of the problem to demonstrate convert function of EES. We are given Johnny is 6 feet tall and weighs 150 pounds. Calculate his BMI using the previously given equation. So the given data can be entered like this in English unit. Please note that pounds have to be entered as LBM in EES, not as LB because it's mass. Now let's convert these to SI. We can use built-in convert functions to get the conversion constant. You can simply type in any built-in function from EES. However, it is easier to use a function information dialog if you are not sure about the syntax. So I'm going to options menu and select the function information to get this dialog box. Now I have to know what is the category of the function that I'm looking for. Most of the mathematical ones are in math and string category. So I go to convert function. If you want, you can get additional information on the, about the function using function info button. Now I can edit the function in the text box to suit my purpose. Oh, I can do that later after pasting it into the equation window. I don't want this x in my equation and I want to convert feet into meters. I'm going to use the same function to convert pounds to kilogram. Now I can use this information to calculate the BMI of John. I know that he is going to uh, complain about unit because I didn't specify the units of JHSI and JWSI. I can do that through the solutions window as we did early, but we can do that from here too. We can right click on the equations window, get the variables window and set up the units. In my opinion, this is the best way to set up units because you can see all the variables that doesn't have units. After fixing the SI units for height and weight, I can see that the units for BMI is missing too. So I can paste the units from previous BMIs using Ctrl C, Ctrl V key combination or right click menu after double clicking click the units to highlight it. Now we can check the equation setup and then solve it to get our answers. If you like, we can format our solutions here and I'm using borders to outline BMI figures.